Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just raise up your voices. Welcome the presence of God into your house. Welcome the presence of God into your bedroom. Welcome the presence of God into your living room. Just praise him right now. Glorify him. He is worthy of all honor. He is worthy of all praise. We have come into the presence of the King of Kings. We have come to stand before the Lord of Lords. We are not in our own bedrooms. We are not in our own living rooms. We are in the presence of the highest authority. Therefore, salutations are due at such a time as this. I would expect you to be saying, Lord, I honor you. I would be expecting expecting you to say, Lord, I praise you. I would be expecting you to say, Lord, I glorify you. When a member of the army stands before a general, even before petitions are made, even before requests are made, there is a salute given. Let us give our salutations to God Almighty. Lion of Jews, that we adore you. Jehovah Jireh, you are our provider. Where would we be without you? We honor you, we worship you. We glorify you for such a time as this. Come on, lift up your voice. Just praise him tonight. Just glorify him tonight. Just thank him tonight. This is your salute. This is your respect. This is your adoration. Put the devil to shame. Show him that you have a king. Show him that you have a captain. A captain of the host. Show him that you have a warrior. He is a mighty man of war. That is his name. Come on, salute him. Even the kingdom of darkness should tremble as we salute our king, our lord of lords, our general in the army, our chief fighter, the one who has adorned us with weapons that are not carnal, that are mighty through him to the pulling down of strongholds. Come on, somebody adore him tonight. Take your hands off, take your eyes off whatever is around you. And give him the honor that is due. Do you know what happens when you go before a general and you are part of the army and you are standing before a major general and you are standing sluggishly and you cannot even salute him and you simply walk in and begin to demand you have dishonored him you have overturned authoritative protocol that is not the way to do things even though you have a request tonight salute him Oh, Alpha and Omega, we salute you. Alpha and Omega, we salute you. Beginning and the end, we honor you. King of Kings, we welcome you. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. We praise you. We praise you, Jesus. Son of David, we welcome you into this service. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you are worthy to be praised. Lord, you are worthy to be glorified. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I want to welcome all of you to our Thursday service. Welcome to the Miracle Center Cathedral where we minister love in a hurting world. I believe that this is the day that the Lord has made. And we are about to rejoice and be glad in it. So if you are looking around and you know 
that somebody should be watching this service and they are not with you just take this time to give them a call the oil is multiplied by an, a pouring out you cannot be selfish about the anointing a call a vessel Borrow vessels are not a few. And tell those vessels that we are now airing on DSTV. Azam TV. Kwazam TV Zuku TV. Oh, and Star Times. Free to air. Tell them that Jessica Kanja Facebook can be accessed. Tell them that Robert Kanja Facebook can be accessed. Tell them the Jessica Kayanja YouTube can be accessed as well. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe it's going to be a wonderful service. We have moved our services early. Services of a so and as you can see, it is 9 30. Hallelujah. And that is what it will be. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Um, allow me to go into a time of prayer. Please do not forget to join us for our lunch hour. A time of atonement. A time of looking and appreciating the precious blood of Jesus. A time to lift up the ultimate altar. We come in exactly at one. And because it is a lunch hour. So tune, on, tune in again for the lunch hour. And let the people around you know. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Father, one more time, I present myself as a vessel willing to be used of you. I pray that if there be anything that is more of me than is of you, Lord, that I will decrease right now, even as you increase. Anoint like my tongue like the pen of a ready writer for clarity of speech so that no one will live the same way they came. I decree and declare that every sense that is watching right now is now subject to the authority of the Spirit of God. Satan, I warn you that you do not have a hold over the people of God tonight. And every spirit of interference, every spirit of absent-mindedness has been rendered helpless and ineffective in the mighty name of Jesus. As your word goes forth tonight To the sick may it be the healing balm of Gilead To the bound may it be deliverance And to the sorrowful may it be glad tidings In the name of Jesus Amen and amen I welcome all of you who are watching us via television Television. And I want to welcome the top chat. I want to welcome the online church and the top chat. A penny, I can see you, peace. I can see you, treasure. I can see you, Farida. I can see you, peace. I can see you, Gwen. I can see you, Tina. I have I can see you, Chiemba. I can see you, um, uh, Juliana. I can see you, Nelly. I can see you, uh, Peace. I can see you, Gloria. I have seen you before, uh, Constance. I can see you, Akum, uh, Chana. All of you are welcome. Tina, Longoria, my daughter, Shamim, I can see you. Wow, Batoma, I can see you. Um, the list goes on and on. Margaret Ming, I can see you. Precious Nachuala, I can see you. Komujuni. Uh, Vanessa, wow, the list goes on and on and on and on. Hassan, Paul, I can see you. Wow, uh, you are all welcome. The list goes on and on and on. And if I haven't mentioned you, it's because of time. But I want you to know that I appreciate you, Top Chat. You travail in the spirit. And you, 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 you have become family. Um, 
We are still at, in a time of fasting and praying and seeking the face of the Lord. Uh, allow me to go back to Daniel chapter 10. He says, in those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread. Neither came flesh. No wine in my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself at all. Till three whole weeks were fulfilled. And in the four and twentieth day of the first month, I was by the side of the great river which is Hedeka. Then I lifted up my eyes. Then I lifted up my eyes. Then I lifted up my eyes and looked. And behold, a certain man clothed in linen whose loins were guarded with fine gold of Ufas. His body also was like the burial, and his face has the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like in color to polish brush. And the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. Daniel was fasting. He had denied himself of food. He had gone into an utterance of prayer which he calls mourning. The spirit of the Lord intercedes for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. The mourning is significant for for intercession. He was in a time of travail. He was in a time of prayer. He was in a fasted state. But he says, and then I lifted up my eyes. And only when I lifted up my eyes did I see this heavenly visitor. Only when I lifted up my eyes did I see this glory glorious visitor. Only when I lifted up my eyes did I see what was happening in the heavens. Only when I lifted up my eyes did I see the answer to my prayers. Hallelujah. Tonight, I want to encourage you about your focal point. Where are your eyes focused? It is important to shift your visual target. Every time you come into a place of seeking God, your eyes cannot longer look at the same things. Your eyes can no longer ponder at the things you used to ponder. Your eyes can no longer ponder on the discouragement and the pain. Your eyes can no longer ponder on the confusion. The Bible says that Daniel had men around him. When he saw the vision, they did not see the vision. Obviously, they were not in a fasted state. Obviously, they had not changed their, their focus, their visual target was still on the earth. But tonight, allow me to preach on superior eyesight. Superior eyesight is to be able to focus further than others is to be able to look beyond some things is to be able to ignore some things is to be able not to concentrate on the things that don't matter there is a human tendency to concentrate on trivial details minute issues things that will not feed you things that will not give you a breakthrough 
kubura things that will not help you go to another level things that will not reveal the heavenlies to you we need to change our focus when you are going somewhere and you are driving in a car and your focus is not on your destination your focus is not on the road you will find yourself in the wrong place or probably having an accident but Daniel says and when I lifted up my eyes not when I fasted not when I mourned not when I travailed but when I lifted up my eyes oh hallelujah when I lifted up my eyes then I saw this beautiful creature then I saw this powerful angel then I saw this amazing creation then I saw this heavenly being David in Psalms 121 verse 1 to 2 says I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth in a time of trouble in the time of attack David refuses to look at his enemies David refuses to concentrate on the attack David refuses to concentrate on the worry David refuses to concentrate on the pain and he says I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help there is no help in your pain there is no help in people's opinion of you there is no help in people's gossip about you there is no help in people's laughter about you there is no help in people's condemnation of you the help is above he said I will lift up my eyes even though they talk my eyes will not be on them even though they gossip my eyes will not be on them even though they judge my eyes will not be on them I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help they may compete with me they may plan to do harm to me they may publicize my stupidity they may ridicule my mistakes but I will lift up my eyes from whence cometh my help I will lift up my eyes to the hills. We cannot concentrate on the things that do not help us. We need to concentrate on where our help comes from. Where is your focal point? What is your physical target? Are you looking at the enemy? Are you looking at your worry? Are you looking at your condition? Daniel said I lifted up my eyes it is only after you change your focus that you will see help it is only after you change your focus that you will realize a visitation it is only after you change your focus that you will see an angel how can you see a visitation when you are focusing on the people who ask you why you have why you are not yet married how can you see a visitation when you are focusing on the people who say to you when will you build how can you see a visitation when you are focusing on the people who say to you when will you realize a wonderful means of earning but David said I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help I want to focus on the solution
solution not on the problem I want to focus on the peace giver not on the worry I want to focus on the answer not on the prayer oh come on somebody hallelujah where is your focus what is your focal point where, where, where have you put your eyes Daniel took his eyes away from what was happening around him and the Bible says he lifted up his eyes I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help from whence cometh my help oh hallelujah thank you Holy Spirit I want to show you people who changed their focus who had to change their focus so that God could visit them who had to change their focus so that God could bless them who had to change their focus so that God could heal them in Genesis chapter 15 verse 5 God takes Abraham outside and he say to him now lift up your eyes towards the heavens and count the stars if you are able to count them and he say to him so shall your descendants be Abraham in his impotent state Abraham in his barren state the Lord is saying to him lift up your eyes don't look into your household don't look in at the doubt of your wife don't look at the skeptics around you don't you look at your old woman don't you look at what people are saying don't you look at your feeble body lift your eyes look up count the stars as many as the stars are so your descendants shall be tonight somebody should take their eyes off their fruitlessness someone should take their eyes off their barrenness there is a giver of children he says children are a blessing from him lift up your eyes tonight lift up your eyes tonight look beyond the impotence in your house look beyond the fruitlessness in your business look beyond the pain in your marriage look beyond he said Abraham you need to stop looking at the things that discourage you you need to stop looking at the things that frustrate you you need to stop looking at the things that say you will never do it. Lift up your eyes. I'm excited tonight. I think I'm preaching to myself. Lift up your eyes. David said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. People want you to look at them, but they don't have a solution. They may discuss your problem but they can't give you an answer people want you to look at them but they don't have the peace they may say peace be with you but only God gives true peace lift up your eyes lift up your eyes lift up your eyes, up your eyes. he said to Abraham the answer is in the skies the answer is in the heaven count those stars the answer is not in your empty house the answer is not in the empty bedrooms the answer is not in your, 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 your fruitless reputation the answer is in the skies Daniel said and I lifted up my eyes and I saw this beautiful heavenly creature oh tonight 
Hallelujah. Lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. There are things that will try to divert you. There are things that will try to steal your focus. But I came to encourage you. Whatever you are believing God for, lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. In John chapter 4, verse 36, Jesus is saying to the disciples, Don't say they are still four months and then comes the harvest. He says, don't say there are still four months and then comes the harvest. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the field for they are already ready for harvest. Ah, Jesus yes. realizes that these people are counting the months to harvest time. They are saying it is four months. And he says to them, if only you could lift up your eyes. If only you could see. The harvest is already here. Don't count the waiting time. Don't count the waiting time. If God has promised you a harvest, look up. The harvest is already here. Some people God promised you a marriage. And you are counting the years that you've prayed. You are counting the waiting time. You are saying, I've prayed for seven years. But I don't see anything. Jesus says, Look up. The harvest is already here. Faith calls the things that are not as if they are. The answer is in the stars. The answer is in the skies. Don't concentrate on the waiting time. Look up. The stars are writing something. The skies are counting something. He said to them, lift up your eyes. The harvest is already here. I want to talk to you. If you are believing God for something and you are like these disciples, you are saying it's been it's four months left God is speaking to you don't count the time don't count the years look up and see that marriage is there and see that prayer request is there someone was telling me I have waited too long I have prayed for my marriage to be healed and I said God is never too early neither is he too late it is time for you to lift up your eyes lift up your eyes and see it as present because faith calleth the things that are not as if they are Tonight, I encourage you to change your focal point. Change your visual target. Lift up your eyes to the hills. From whence cometh your help? Oh, where does your help come from? Does it come from counting the days? Does it come from counting the hours? He said to them, no. The time is now. The time is now. Concentrate on the time. Concentrate on God. Lift up your eyes. Do not concentrate on the things that are past. Hallelujah. Amen. Luke 21, verse 28. Jesus again is speaking to the Congregation. Yes, and he says, now when these things begin to happen, this is Luke 21, 28. When these things begin to happen, look up. Lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. He's simply trying to say, 
It is Luke 21, 28. That you don't have any right to concentrate on wars and rumors of wars and pandemics and pain and worry because redemption does not come from them. Help does not come from them. Salvation does not come from them. So when they begin to happen, Corona is happening right now. And there are people who are focused on it. We spend the whole day talking about Corona. We spend the whole day talking about its effects. We spend the whole day talking about how it spreads. But God says, lift up your eyes. When you begin to see these things, your redemption is near. When the devil begins to kick, when the devil begins to fight then salvation is at hand then visitation is at hand then exaltation is at hand come on lift up your eyes what are you concentrating on what are you looking at this? what are you looking at tonight what is in your way the answer is in the heavens the answer is in the sky don't concentrate on the things that will offer you no help don't concentrate on the problem when there is a solution on the question when there is an answer on the pain when there is a healer 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 18 says but we fix our eyes not on what is sin but what is unseen hallelujah Amen. because those things that are sin they are temporal they are not designated to stay the gossip of your friends the ridicule of the people around you the opinion of others it is not destined to stay it will change the day God blesses you but the things that we don't see the things in the heavenlies those are the things that we should concentrate on because they are the things that are I have come to adjure you to change your focus tonight. I have come to encourage you to change your visual target. Lift up your eyes. The harvest is here. Lift up your eyes. Visitation is here. Lift up your eyes. Redemption is here. I want you to walk out of this place knowing very well that you have superior eyesight that your eyes are not focused where others are focused do you know that, amount, that spirituality is not based on what you say is not based on what you look like is not based on how you pray spiritual Spirituality is based on what you see. What do you look at? If there are 24 hours in a day, what are you concentrating on? If you are believing God, don't concentrate on the things that will not help you, on the things that will not deliver you, on the things that will not encourage you there is a deliverer there is an encourager David said oh I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 to says let us run with perseverance the rest watched out for us 
fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer, hallelujah, and the finisher of our faith. He says, as you run, fix your eyes on Jesus. I have shared the testimony about how I loved to sprint in my younger days we had no treadmills but sprinting was more defined in the fields but every time you, you, you set off your heart to sprint you had a target you had a focal point and even though you had your family around you and saying Jessica go Jessica move you would not even look at them you had no time to wave you had no time to examine their facial features you were focused on the finishing line because that was your visual target you had to get there and you had to get there fast and if you were even at one point disorganized focus wise for example if you fail then you will have lost if you fail hallelujah you would have lost because you had focused on the ground but if you focused on the focal point you would run the rest. You would finish the rest. You would run a competitive rest. If they are people cheering you, you let them cheer. You don't have to wave back. You don't have to tell them I'm trying my best. You don't have to explain yourself. You don't have to tell them by next year I'll be married. In six years, I'll have built in seven years no there is a visual target there is a focal point the answer is in the sky Daniel was waiting for an answer he had prayed the the, the prince of Persia had stood in the principalities had grabbed the answer but when he lifted up his eyes the answer was there oh come on lift up your eyes the answer is not in the opinion of people the answer is not in the, in the ridicule of people the answer has never been about the gossip of people even though they put you down even though they plan an attack even though they want to embarrass you the answer is not, in truth, is not on them they have problems greater than yours they have situations more embarrassing than yours they have hard rocks that they have hit but Abraham was told to look up if you have nothing to count. Count the stars. If you have nowhere to look, lift up your eyes. Oh, I want to encourage you tonight. Change your focal point. Somebody is lifting up their eyes. Someone is hearing from God. Someone is breaking through. He had fasted. He had travailed. But he only got the answer when he changed his focus when he changed his focus what are you looking at tonight what are you focused on are you like those who counted the months to the harvest are you like those in John chapter 4 verse 36 are you like those who are saying it's a whole four months before we can get a harvest God is saying to you lift up your eyes he is saying to them lift up your eyes it is there in John 4 
verse 36. He's saying to them, lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. The harvest is already here. Are you counting? the years you have prayed for your promise are you counting the years that you have prayed for your prophecy the answer is already in the heavens the answer is already in the skies Daniel had prayed but his eyes were in the wrong place you cannot see the harvest because your eyes, is, um, your eyes are among those those who are questioning the years and the times. Oh, we have to wait longer. Oh, I don't see any signs. Oh, I don't see any sign of employment. I don't see any sign of healing. I don't see any sign of deliverance. Lift up your eyes. You are looking in the wrong place. The harvest is already here. And Daniel said, I lifted up my eyes and I looked tonight as we begin to pray I am encouraging you as Daniel lifted up his eyes as Abraham lifted up his eyes as David lifted up his eyes as Jesus said to the disciples lift up your eyes as he said in the final days lift up your eyes don't concentrate on the signs that will come the negative signs lift up your eyes in the same way I encourage you it's in the heavenlies it's in the skies it's, in, it's, it's, it's before the redeemer lift up your eyes lift up your eyes Psalm 141 verse 8 says but my eyes are fixed on you sovereign Lord in you I take refuge do not give me over to death they are, they, they are probably saying you will die they are probably orchestrating your death they are probably orchestrating your end they are probably orchestrating your disaster but the psalmist said my eyes are fixed on you and because of that you are my refuge what good will it do me to concentrate on my enemy what good will it do me to concentrate on he who desires my life what, what good will it do me to concentrate on he who desires my end my eyes are fixed on you. My eyes are fixed on you. When you begin to fix your eyes on God, you realize that there is little time. Too little time in a day to fix your eyes on people's opinions. To fix your eyes on their ridicule. To fix your eyes on their judgment. He said, my eyes are fixed on you and even though they want me dead don't hand me over my eyes are not on the problem my eyes are on the solution my eyes are not on the question my eyes are on the answer my eyes are not on the turmoil my eyes are on the heavenly peace my eyes are not on the disease my eyes are on the healer David fasted 
Daniel fasted. Daniel, Daniel prayed. Daniel but it is only after he changed his focus that he saw the visitation that he got an answer. In this time of fasting and praying, do not allow people to divert you. Do not allow their conversations to spoil your focus. Do not allow their, their, their opinions to draw you away from what you are determined to get. Lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. Because your help cometh from God. Your help cometh from God. And whatever you are going through tonight, may your eyes be lifted up. 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 Whatever you are going through tonight, may your eyes be lifted up. Hallelujah. May your eyes be lifted up away from your, your problem onto the answer away from the pain onto the healer away from death onto the resurrection and the life away from hate onto love hallelujah Amen. father in heaven we lift up our eyes to away from the situations around us we pledge superior eyesight to look and focus in places that other people cannot focus Lord Jesus we lift up our eyes to in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah Amen. thank you master thank you holy spirit as the minstrels come back to minister you have had worry you have had pain you have had the judgment of people you have had ridicule they can never be an encounter if you don't change your focus many people fast many people pray but they concentrate on the things that they shouldn't concentrate on and because of that they have no encounter. But tonight, don't focus on the things that are not the solution. Those things that we see, they are temporal. But what we don't see is eternal. And 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. Hallelujah. Amen. Your barrenness may be seen. Your poverty may be seen. Your debt may be seen by everyone around you. But we fix our eyes not on what is seen but what is unseen. But what is unseen. But what is unseen. Therefore tonight don't fix your eyes on the things that are seen. Yes, you are in pain. Yes, they have walked away from you. Yes, your marriage is in turmoil. Yes, you are in debt. Yes, you are in worry. But we don't fix our eyes on what is sin. 
So we fix our eyes not on what is seen. That is 2 Corinthians 4 verse 18. But on what is not seen. Forget what is seen tonight. Let the people around you see it. But choose to change your focal point. Choose to change your visual target. Choose to change what you are concentrating on. I know that you have lost loved ones. I know that people are ignoring you. But in this season, change your focal point. Daniel said, and I lifted up my eyes. God said to Abraham, lift up thine eyes. Jesus said to the disciples, when you see these signs, lift up thine eyes. Oh, and David said, I will lift up my eyes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. As the minstrels come into worship, may we continue to lift up our eyes. May we continue to lift up our eyes. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty, powerful name of Jesus. Change your focal point. Choose water destiny. Change your visual target. We are running a race. And you need a target. And Paul said, fix your eyes on Jesus. He is the focal point. He is the finishing line. Hallelujah. Amen. That is Hebrews 12.2. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God bless you tonight. As you worship, while you change your focal point, while you change your visual target, in the name of Jesus.